Okay, hey everybody. Um, sorry. Um, this is sorry, it's kind of a start of a new series. I'm gonna be um showcasing the builds on the server. It's a big server, as you could probably remember from the last video. Okay, let's see. We have. I just got done recording Shads, which is this one. It's going to be in this video. So, you can skip ahead if you want. Um, he spent an hour talking about this, giving me a tour and everything. He's on voice and everything. It's pretty fun. It's super technical, but I think you'll enjoy it. Um, that's his old one. Here's Creeper's Shenzhou and his Discovery. I might spend an hour with him doing a showcase of both of those. Maybe 20 minutes with this because it's not even close to done yet. Um, we have... I don't know about the prospects of getting this a video with this. So I don't know him very well. That's the Vesta by iPanic and Mads. He literally just told me what this was. Um, Droid ship. Don't remember what it's called. I'll definitely be doing the one on him. Queens. There's not really enough going on here yet, but in the future I will be doing some on his. The Probert. HD, I think, or Troy. I don't remember. I'm so sorry. Queen, Calvin, and Droid. Build lead HD. Okay, close enough. Maybe I'll get on the phone with Atro and he can tell me about this. I don't know. The possibilities are endless. We spent just an hour on Ether, and it's barely even done. It's like 1% done. Not even. It's massive. Well, that's the Enterprise A. I don't know who's working on the Enterprise B refit looking thing, but I might do a video with him. Droid and them two. Okay, and three. I can't count. All right. I think that's about it. Anywho, uh, enjoy the video. Ciao. Hey y'all, I'm here with um, Shad or Appler Enigma and doing a ship showcase of the Ether, I think. Is that right? I call it I call it Ether. Ether, Ether means the same thing. We are in the shuttle bay, it looks like, the main one. Hang one on, of seven. Oh, I'm on seven? speed one. Yes, she has seven. I thought there was like two. <laughs> One in Saucer, two in Star Drive, four in Pylons. Two each pylon. Okay, it's your ship. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, this is the main one. Well, this is the launch bay. This is kind of split into three segments. That's just because space limitations. Hey, and this is like the biggest... My radar distance down because I forgot I was in the PC killer. Okay, that's better. You want the PC kill? I'll take it to the Lumi B. That, that destroys PCs. This is like the biggest example of where space limitations hit. That's why it's like two decks lower than it should be. Because there's a load of sensory equipment and oh, random so gibberish. Right here is where it parks. And these two decks are not where it parks. It's just a These gap. two pet decks. These two decks I had to use for other spacing, plus I want to utilize more of the inner saucer area for the shuttle bay. Okay. Over here is where it really just breaks the mind. So, towards the back, it's on this level. Towards the front, it's now two levels lower. 
Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Wait, which way is it? That's, that's the front. Okay. Yeah, that, that goes to the front, that goes to the back. That goes into the neck area of stupidity, and I love it. Just have you figured that out goes... the cargo hatches? Oh, yeah. She... I lost count how many she has. There's four on the ventral, two on the dorsal, and there's a cargo loading dock right at the back. Which would probably have been an even better place, because that's even that's more it. fleshed out. Oops. Yeah, the main shuttle bay, like the top layer, it's just... All the craft up here, that will actually be oh, stored. Or... Yeah. You're in the purple, gotcha. <laughs> Yeah, this is the work in progress area. I'm still building it out. So every shuttle up on the top is just your general shuttle. So you've got your T eighteen H's or if you're if you know the shuttle, it's the Type nine. Starf No no, it's Starf the Command dash zero four. So wait, Jamie's those are type shuttle. nines? No, oh, they okay. were. Okay, I see it now. Yeah. It's the Type 18 H. It's basically just a retrofitted Type 9. Okay, I see no, you were in show, but... Creeper sh Shuttle Bay. <laughs> <laughs> but she takes a lot of discovery elements as well as post nemesis. Could you not tell by the giant pillars on the wall? Yeah, I, yeah. I see that now. Yeah. Yeah, she has Type 24s, which are these things. Your work bees and your work sphinx. Though she does have an alternative design, and I'm planning another one, but that's more for dolphins. What do you expect from me? Yeah, you have a pretty extensive shuttle yard. As you can see. <laughs> There's more oh, somewhere I'm else, with... guys. This is not it. Oh, this is just the, the stuff that's being used on the AFA. And this is getting expanded on. Apart from one shuttle, because I still can't be bothered to name it, uh, pretty much every shuttle in this yard has a name. Which shuttle are you talking about, this one? Yeah, the, the reconfigurable mission variable shuttle. Yeah, you need to come up with a better name. Yes, it, that's kind of why it, it it's really excruciatingly hard to name, because it's literally just a shuttle that is... Alright, I need something for tactical. Rip everything out, make it tactical based. Okay, I need it for science. Rip everything out, make it science based. From someone who's not as knowledgeable as you are, I would just honestly pick a number and go with it. Ugh. It's, uh, it's, not a num it's not a type. It's not part of the generic shuttle range. It's a specialist shuttle. Okay. So it would actually be a named shuttlecraft? Or it would be... Like, like a class name? It would either have a class name or a specialist name, which these ones here are called Science Recon Shuttles. This is a Science Recon Shuttle. It is literally just me and Creeper decided to cryptic. Me and you've got the medical... Wow, the, did the med you go ahead. This is the Medical Recon Shuttle. That's interesting. Me yeah, and Waff did the Stingray class shuttle and it kind of has a similar overall shape uh, the, taken. these two are generally they're just the discovery shuttles but made in for the 25th century so it's a, it basically it's cryptic so if you play star trek online you know cryptic has this amazing thing where they like to take every single discovery era ship and make it a 25th counterpart some of them are beautiful some of them are less beautiful i mean picard did that they put a discovery shuttle right smack in the middle of the show well at least cryptic actually takes the common sense to make them look like they belong in the 21st century but then I, again I picard, <laughs> picard uh, you can understand they're just trying to throw it to, they're just trying to use shuttle ships that are practically invaluable to them for a rescue squad so yeah, you've got the medical and the science recon. This is meant to be a tactical ship. Tactical shuttle. Sorry, I, I keep getting lost. Basically, it's the replacement for the V-class. There you are. 
No wonder you're yeah. inside. Yes, this is the um, this is the replacement for the V class. Are these torpedoes? Yes. Oh, I was gonna these say because all... this is. Oh, it is. These are all micro torpedoes. Micro. No wonder they're only one block. Well, some of them are only one block. Are they're all one some... be one block. Yeah, there's some one block ones in here. Yeah, the... I'll probably end up making it. Little tiles, micro version of yeah, the. Yeah, I feel like these top. should go. Honestly, these ones in the back, the, the singles. Because oh, at this point, they look oh. like shelves. The ones back here, these look like torpedoes, though. Oh, I might reconfigure it a bit. Hang on, let me find my compass. Oh my god, there's a guy blaring rap music outside my dorm. <laughs> Sorry, if your vibrations in the microphone stand. That's what that is. This is the Aintree. I just call it the Aintree because I literally could not think of a name for this shuttle. And I ended up just settling with the Aintree. I think this is, this, this, yeah, this is the one I'm using as a yacht. Yeah. Yes. The one I broke. In matter of fact, it's, I it's, just, this. <laughs> it, it's literally just a runabout. It's a 25th century runabout. I've, uh, she now has nine modules, mainly because I wanted to break one. Oops. Oh, that's, that's a brig. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, brig carrier. Uh, you've got the two work piece here. This is the new one. Okay, now like that's modernized. I like that one. It's a, it's a more bulkier version of this. Both are getting used. The work sphinx, which I wasn't, honestly I love the I love the sphinx. Wasn't this designed in like TMP era? Oh no, this was in the TNG I, oh, technical it is? manual. Okay. Overall, it's just it's in simplistic design. You you can't really modernize the work sphinx. You can make an additional version, but it's really hard to modernize it because what basically, why, what, why break what isn't broken? It just tosses stuff. <laughs> That's all it does. Why do you need to modernize that? Well, it repair. It's actually like it's a lot of the heavy duty engineering stuff. Does it have re replicators on it? Like a big old um, what are those things called? Those little robots in that one episode of TNG. What, nanites? No, the... Exocoms? Yeah, that. Is it like one of those with replicators on it? Eh, uh, I wouldn't have a replicator. I don't know if these things would have replicators. They're... Like... Think of it like a ocean explorer. In a sense. It has the oh, robotic arms has, like, and all yeah, that. Arms. Yeah, it's, it, it's all the repair stuff. Yeah. Using all these shuttles is gonna be a pain in the neck, and this isn't even all of them. I I've mean, you still got, got more shuttle bays. I'm sure you'll find room for them all. I've still got to make more because basically she needs one of the most diverse fleet of shuttlecraft ever seen. Would you call this a carrier at this point? No, nope, multi mission. She's so big, she can actually do so many missions. It's actually impressive. It's kind of why I wanted her to the scale she is. is I wanted something where you could literally say, I need you to do this mission. Yes. <laughs> and she could do it. Did you but ever also... see my sign down on deck 51? I, I think I did. I th was it the one? Congratula congratulations, you've made it down here. Now go see your grandkids. I ended up removing that. I saw it the other day. Huh. I'm surprised it's still... Yeah, it's right here. <laughs> huh. I thought I removed it. <laughs> yeah, this... She is a very big, but... She's... The best way to describe her is she's an she, she's 
is a bit of everything, but a master of none. Let's see, um, I lost you again, I'm stupid. I am towards the back of the ship near deck 38. Too late, I found you. So, if we use this elevator. You asked for cargo? I think I saw this in my last video, it hasn't been uploaded, to, uploaded though yet. This is the cargo loading deck. Oh, I thought it was a shuttle bay. Nope, this is cargo. So, the interesting thing about this cargo loading dock is there is no door. What happens when the power... you lose power? If... Uh, this is a completely redundant sized force field. If the ship could lose power to this wall field, pretty much she has no power left. Oh, okay. So it has hard mounted batteries that keep it online. Yeah. It, it, it runs thunder size to the extreme. So the I, basically the reason it doesn't have a door was it, the door just doesn't work. I mean, maybe a go up and down door kind of works. Nope. It sliced apart deck 30. It basically starts slicing apart decks and it's something I didn't want. I mean, the entire area was an accident to begin with. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's what happens when you kit bash an entire ship. This sort of stuff happens. But it, it, was a like kit, it was a mistake I wanted to I wanted to keep. And I made it a feature. Reminds me of that weird thing on the bottom of the Excelsior. Was that a car cargo loading area? That weird thing on the bottom of the Excelsior? I don't remember. That was that was a shuttle bay. Oh, it was okay. Yes, this is generally, this is constant force field, and the force field is double rotunda sized. It will have, it does have direct connections to the auxiliary power systems and its own battery units. Like I say, if it can run out of power, there's pretty much no power left on the ship. Plus, this area itself isn't always going to have people in it. Like I say, it's a loading dock. It is not a active cargo bay. Where does this go? That'll go to a cargo bay. More cargo bays, gotcha. Like I said, this is the loading. This is where you load in cargo, and every major door goes to a cargo bay. Let's see. Yeah. She, can, she needs a lot of cargo bays and a lot of cargo storage. She is designed to be out in the unknown for a very long time. So, you actually do have work piece down here as well? Yeah, they're the forklifts of this cargo bay. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> and there's dead space area, but literally just could not use it for anything, so I just left it. Couldn't you use it for, like, shelves or something? I mean, the door's right here. There could be some kind- oh, this could be, like, the redundancy you talked about, like, battery systems or something, I don't know. No, there was a, there's nothing that can go behind it because it's basically very close to the hole already. I guess just put walls in here. Clean it up a little it's bit. Basically, it's basically just emergency bracing. Yeah. Yes, uh, as a matter of fact, you can actually fit a shawl down here, so this could actually be used as a temporary shawl storage. As a matter of fact, we fit one of Aether's yachts down here for a joke. Unfortunately, the joke backfired when it actually fit. Oh god, that's... How big it... Yeah. Wait, there's a whole bunch of shuttles down that I saw you working on. Which one's the yacht? A, the Ava would actually not have a yacht. She would have a few. A what? She would actually have a few. Because oh, a few. She wouldn't... Basically... I don't understand why it's called the Captain's Yacht, because in a sense, it's just a recon shuttle in itself. It's designed for long-term missions. As a matter of fact, it would be very rare that the Captain would actually use it. Because they would be expected to be on the ship. It would actually be used by a long-term away mission crew, possibly consisting with the first officer. Hmm. 
But it could also be used as the captain's personal shuttle. But as we saw in TNG, if the captain was to go somewhere, he would actually just use a normal shuttlecraft. So, I never understood that. So, this is also another shuttle control booth. She does oh, have a couple of... Oh, that's a shuttle bay. I didn't notice that. Yeah, the, this that, big door down here is like, a shuttle bay. Why is there a runway-looking thing down here? There's no door. Yeah, this big thing here is a door. Is that what you call that? Like a runway or a, a landing it's zone? A, or, I don't know what that is. I call it a... Uh, I call it a landing pad. This door is actually the biggest pain in the neck because basically it, it's basically like a garage door. So this entire two deck, this two block space here, think of the door like being rolled up. That's all that space is for. Ouch. That's all I can do with that door. Up here we have another shuttle bay. Got um, this is a shuttle bay too. Okay, that's the back of the ship. It looks like. How did I end up back here? Okay. I because remember. the because the cargo loading docks in Star Drive it's oh, near the okay. back of the ship. I was like, where? Where? How did I get back? Here? <laughs> and what's so, this? Are these just lights? Yeah, they're lights. Interesting. So, interesting. so, think, think in the terms of red, green, red stop, green go. Crap! Someone texted me. No, well, they did not. Okay. I still actually have to add a tractor beam emitter at some point down here, but eh, I can wait. There's actually a load of tractor beam emitters on this ship. It's kind of insane. It's kind of like the four lights on a runway, I guess. Yes, I kind of what leaves. Called. Since we're in the back, we might as well focus on one of the weaponized parts of the ship. You mean the phaser up here? The torpedo. Oh, I think I see it. Yeah. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Every torpedo on launcher on this ship is the same, so I only have to show you one. I like this one. I like how it's cut out. Yeah, again, this is an aspect of the, when I was using Odyssey Hulls, and, uh, yeah, I kept it, because, again, I really like it. Well, I don't know, shall we? <laughs> yes, this one in the pylon. Basically, fire... Oh, it fires two. Dual. Yes, it's dual tube. Four, there's four launchers in the back, four launchers in the front, all dual tubed. So effectively, she could fire eight torpedoes at you at one go. Wait, does this have more torpedo launchers than the scimitar? No. I think the scimitar had, what, 20? I feel like it was 30. Yeah, the, this has less. <laughs> the, yes, this is another shallow bait hole. So, interesting fact about this pylon, this pylon is not a dead space. It better not be. It's like six or seven yeah. decks high. At its widest, which is where this door is, it's ten decks. At its finest, it is five decks. Wait a minute. On the Ganymede, I am on deck seven. So, this is thicker than the saucer section of my ship. Yep. Yeah, have fun with that. But it, I, I, one thing I hate about ships pylons like that, it like basically like the sovereign and all that is. I hate ships that They're basically friendly. have a structure point that is practically useless. It's one of the aspects of the Ava when I was designing her. I really wanted that there was no dead space area. All the aspects of the ship had a purpose. Oh. Even the pylon. And there's... yes, there's the next shuttle bay. <laughs> Will this be hooked up to the other one? No. Okay. Uh, the These two shuttle bays are on completely different decks, amazingly. Because the front does dip inwards a little, so it does actually have a lesser deck. Hang on. There. I'll be right back. 
back. I'm I mean I'm not leaving, I'm just going to a different area of the map. I wanna okay. give the viewers a quick idea of something. Okay. I think idea of scale. Yeah. Okay, here's the top. And I am he said it was ten decks high. At its widest. So that's the top. So that pylon comes down to about keep, here. Keep in mind that the pylon itself is a mixture of three and four tall decks. So is mine. I think it was about three, four talls and or four, four talls and six, six, three talls. Can't be too sure. Okay, yeah, that's it goes from here to here. So yeah, yeah, it's pretty big. Now I just TP to the ether, that was a mistake. <laughs> okay. I think you'll recognize these. Yep. The torpedo launchers, gotcha. I just mess with you. <laughs> These Excuse are interesting. Yeah. The impulse engines. Well, the exhaust. As a matter of fact, when I was doing the the heavily requested revision for the diamond block, I made a blue one. Hang on, I'll show it which to is, you guys. Which is still here. I never actually got rid of it. That's what it looks like. Oh. It actually still exists. I like that one, honestly. I like it. Yeah, it's interesting. I've been contemplating using it. I mean, what's the difference, cannon-wise? I mean, I know the Enterpri the original Enterprise had them, but uh, I would have to talk that over with them. Which means she's a resident expert. If you guys are wondering. That, which means me and M having another three hours of uh, heavy discussion time. Just remind me not to be on the server when that's happening. <laughs> I don't yeah, want to have a headache in. like last time. Duratinium refuel port. Okay, there you go. Are you going to be updating these gold blocks too? No. Okay. Uh, the diamond block was basically the reason I updated it. It was... We all knew it needed the update. The only other one I'd... The reason I've held off on any others is because Emma and, and me are looking to continue with the Mind Track pack, which means pretty much we're going to have infinite amount of blocks soon enough. Eventually on the side of this impulse engine will be gravimetric sensors as well. And, ah, okay. Just to make your head hurt. I mean, I got... A deep field imaging array on mine, so. Yeah, this, this will have gravimetric sensors. Primary and secondary is on the side of the impulse engine. Uh, speaking of sensors, she actually has a sensor strip back here that I probably need to push back into the ship by two blocks. Yeah, I was gonna wonder, kind of wondering what you're gonna be putting on this strip here. Yeah, that sensors. Sensors and windows. Speaking of windows... Here is the Aztec <laughs> would... if you guys are curious. Yeah, this is... Uh, on the map. Wow. You'll see it eventually, when we get to it. Yeah, we're about to hit it right now, actually. The grey and the red. These are not stock blocks, vanilla blocks, I'm sure you guys can tell. Some of them are, some of them yeah. are not. We have secondary flow sensor right here. Those those look like logos when I'm in the map, if I'm being honest. No, they're actually a sensor. Flow sensors. Part of the slipstream technology. I think As a matter of fact you'll you'll actually see a lot of little details all around here. We've got escape pods there. You've got some yeah, I say you've got escape pods. You've actually got DO DOT hatches. Because me and M discussed it, and it works for the Aether because of just the scale. 
equipment bays. For? Just like spacewalks, like in in first contact. Uh, uh, they're for repair drones. That's what they do deploy to repair drones. Ah, I gotcha. You've yep. got equipment equipment bays and ac systems access across the hull as well. Obviously, you've got the abundance of windows. Yeah. Speaking of windows... Tell me about this ravine. <laughs> the community grotto area. When designing this ship, and I, when I was figuring this out, and you this is when I knew... You to save yourself some time and cut out a big hole in the ship, I gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is when I knew she was going to be huge. I wanted to do something excruciatingly massive. And this was a space. Basically, it's meant to be what makes this, sh this ship so homely for so many people. Instead of basically you're walking around the same tin can corridors everywhere, you've got these massive open spaces. This does have civilians, right? Yes, she would have civilians. How thick is this class? I gotta ask. Uh, thick. As in wide, tall, or long. Just curious about this protection from, you know, explody bits. Uh, she would have primary secondary shields, and her... Her whole plating would be the equivalent of the era, probably ablated. What is it? Like transparent aluminum, or is that dated? No, that by the twenty third century, that would be dated. Then, the well, the transparent parts of the ship would be equal, if not stronger, than the hull itself, while being welded to the frame of the ship. So aiming at the edge of the glass would actually be a worse thing to do because that's actually where it's strongest. It makes me wonder why they just just made the whole ship see through. That's just stupid. Yeah. That's the, just I, stupid. the the idea of the ship having these large windows is just like I say, it's just for her crew. Are these just general purpose sensors over here? Towards the back? Oh those are that's an advanced sensor cluster. Very complex. You can actually here's an interesting fact, you can actually get into this. This is an airlock. Jesus. What the hell? Um hang on. Oh I'm still holding diamond block. Well, yeah, you don't have anything in here yet, obviously. No. Do you yes. have yes. engineering? Sorry. Oh, we gotta see the deflector. That's cool. Yeah, in fact, that's one of the places I want to go to soon because the deflector does have some secrets to her. We do have the primary sense flow sensors and capacitor thing. Originally on the Vesta, I think these were transceivers, but since the ship has them separated, I used them as a Capacitor the node. The, the this is actually one of our airlocks up here down here. I think this goes to deck six. Actually, it might be a deck four one. There's, there's one of the low decks. One, two, three, four. It's either five or six. Is that where it lays? That's deck five. It looks like deck. It looks like this yeah, that's deck. deck. Yeah, that's deck five. Out of fact, uh, while we're on the, the upper part of the ship, obviously, yeah, this giant thing here is a, this is an atrium. I'm not even gonna hide it. Is that an atrium down there, or is that a computer core? What at the front? Yeah, that purple. That's the computer core. That's her primary computer core. And what about the other circle? That's her... That's the slave node to the primary computer core. This whole giant area here is her quad computer core system. I don't even know what a slave node does. Think of it, like, 
primary, secondary, computery. So primary does all the major calculations and it would feed off the secondary one back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So it's like master slave type, type deal, but in a quad in a quad quad set. Gotcha, I gotcha. Trust me, I made that sound a lot I'm trying to make it sound just a lot more simple than it actually is. We have what I call the Blues Lounge, and the reason it's called the Blues Lounge is one, yes, it's going to be a jazz themed lounge, and two, these lights actually emit against the windows. So these windows would be constantly illuminated blue. I turn Gamma Bright off, let me see. You mean well, in, course, in universe, but not in Minecraft, I gotcha. Yes, in universe, because these are all blue lights and they would just emit against the windows. A lot of people actually thought this was the bridge. And I also made a joke with Messy Desk about it being very Orville like. Yeah, I see that. I see that. But no, this is not the bridge. The bridge is on the bottom of the ship. Yeah, that's something oh. we still gotta see. Oh yes, the two versions. This is Big Daddy Senzo right here, and it's got a bottom bridge. <laughs> so we've got the two versions. We've got the version one, which Droid you said was doing this. Or... Uh, Dateless. Okay. Or Aurora. Aurora is working on this one. I was helping, and then because I I didn't know where we were going with this, I kind of started my own. She went crazy with this thing. Oh yeah, I actually love it. It's really impressive. Impractical, but impressive. Mainly because I'm not doing a turbo. Jeffrey had the turbo lights all, all I'm like this. What's wrong with this? Sorry. I'm not doing every turbo lift in the ship like this. Oh, I gotcha. As cool as it would be, yeah, I still have a little bit of sun in my brain. Yeah, you gotta compromise somewhere. Yeah, I do love this bridge. It is very neatly worked out. I'm sure you can use parts of it. I have been. And the version 2 is this one, which is the one I started. She, Daedalus actually did help me with the fuse screen. I Sorry. needed help with... It's alright. Oh, I guys, this is a Little Tiles mod, if you were wondering. <laughs> um, it needed help with the curvature, and I came up with this thing. Not sure how you guys do that. Where is the difficulty? It isn't difficult? Are you sure about that? Uh, it's a sphere. It's just getting the right shaping for the sphere. Okay, so you just cut up a sphere. Okay. That sounds yeah. a lot easier when you explain it like that. So, the front of this bridge is basically... It's actually a... Basically, it's a stellar cartography slash hollow communications area. And it, it can be used as an observation lounge. What's down here? Is it just a window? Uh, sensor dome. Gotcha. And you've got... I have actually been labeling all the consoles. I'm always a person, if I'm going to put a console on my bridge, it must have a purpose. So, like, this console here is actually part of the forward section, so this is, like, used for the making this completely opaque. So this whole forward section of the bridge would actually be isolated. This is just your general display. This is basically an unmanned console. It doesn't need to be manned. We've got slipstream operations, propulsion and engineering, which on the mirror, both of these consoles was actually communications and possibly sensors. Yeah, as what well. goes in here? I think I that asked you that, but I'm not sure. This is slipstream operations. And slipstream propulsion. Oh, I'm talking about the alcove in here. Oh, this down here? 
Is yeah, that's a little hole. That's a cat. That's the window. Oh, okay. So the window's the diagonal part. Gotcha. Yeah, the window's the white. The white bit. That's actually a window. I might use it for 3D inter uh, 3D graphics. Maybe I'm not I, sure. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. Yeah, you, this is mostly the engineering now, Coven on the mirror will be sensors and communications. Yeah, I gotta take a quick look, just quiz what that looks like from outside. Yeah, that's cool. Bridge with a lot of windows. <laughs> Everyone's worst nightmare. It's definitely different from anything I've ever seen. And you got more engineering and environment, and on the mirror, these would be both be science. Do you still have the original ether bridge somewhere? Oh yeah, that. Oh, that's all the way back at the other ether. That oh. one destroys your frames. <laughs> I mean, I'm getting 60 FPS right now. 110. I think mine is capped, actually. So is mine. Mission ops, okay. Interesting. That's the the mirror would is also mission ops. And that's um, a hologram, oh. right? Yeah. Yeah. Master systems display, master systems display. There it is. Wrong ship, but there it is. Yeah. This is also meant to be, again, and it's another window from the uh, conference room in the back. Let me see what's in here. Totally unfinished, yeah. but... This back room, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to make just yet. Um, but it does have a Jeffrey's tube access. We escape pods. It looks like. Yep. No shit. Yeah, these are these are bridge escape pods at the back. You've got another room here, which again has the Jeffrey's tube. So, not entirely sure. Just an open space here. Captain's ready room here. All these back windows were full. I don't know how long I've been I've been recording for, but I'm sure the viewers will eat this right up. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> I uh, think this droid is be next. It's probably going to be an office or something. It makes it would make an interesting lounge. A little bar area over here. How tall? This isn't very tall, is it? Uh, it's a lot taller than it looks. Where's the floor? Oh, it's there. Okay. Yeah, that's the floor layer of the deck above. Interesting fact, this bridge can actually be viewed from deck 28. This will actually have a uh, window areas or railings, so you oh, can actually see the bridge cool. from deck 28. The bridge itself is on deck 29 upper and lower. So deck 29U and L. Because it's actually not part there's... part of it's not part of deck 29. I was noticing something when I was over here. What in the hell is going on down here? This is how Daedalus rotates things. I I don't judge. What the hell? <laughs> I have no idea. Eventually, I'll ask them to clear this up because it's kind of messy. I feel kind of small right now. <laughs> I think we all do. Uh, what else well, can we does. find? Let's see what we can find on the bottom of the ship. Ah, oh, yes. Before we hit the deflector. Find Planetary sensor dome. Yep. I Planetary need that one. Sensor dome. Yep. And of course, we're gonna have to talk about this one. Do you have any good uh, screenshots of the outside that I can use as a thumbnail? Uh, from the outside, no. It's excruciatingly hard to get a good view screenshot of the outside. Can't help with the ship being three kilometers long. I just use the uh, the back, the the cargo loading dock. That's three thousand meters, guys, for real scale. If you don't know how yep. big a block is. 3,206 meters by 970 by 237. 
like Shad here, he's a pretty respectable height in this game. <laughs> so, this is her multi projection deflector system. I have no idea what that means. Yeah, eventually it'll be more and more proofed out, but that's basically it's why it's five deflectors. This looks like the spinal lands on the galaxy. Dreadnought. Uh, kind of does, but it's there. Uh, this is all deflector. What's it do? This big auxiliary, thing? auxiliary units and projector systems. It's basically just an auxiliary deflector for the auxiliary deflector. Gotcha. Here's what the bridge looks like on the outside, if you people were curious. Without the abundance of windows? Yeah. Oh, and here it is with... just blocks. Incomplete, but that's what it looks like. Interesting. I lost the... I'm still at the deflector. Okay. Found you. So, this Ooh. deflector has five dishes with... Amplifier coils. Is that what the blue things are? Yeah, they're like an amplifier vectoring system. And two navigational field emitters. One that just goes on forever. <laughs> well, this deflector was an absolute pain in the neck. I don't actually think it's even finished yet. Nope, still got to do a bit of paneling. So, while we're up here, this is actually an engineering lab. With a sphere. What's the sphere do? Uh, that is a, quantum is a quantum singularity reactor. Oh, so it's a ro and they got it from the Romulans. Uh, no, this is actually a lot more refined than the Romulans would ever hope to be. So... It takes the same basic principle of a quantum singularity reactor, it's just a very powerful uh, power system. I think which it would look cool direct with, if it was lined or something, but that's just me. Uh, it would it'd be eventually oh, okay. decorated and lined and co conduited and all that. So this has two connections, one that goes up towards the nacelles which will have power taps into the main ship power grid. And one that goes lower into the deflector itself. As a matter of fact, imagine this entire room being quite discovery-like with a big window that goes actually into the deflector. So does it? Does this have a warp core somewhere? She does have a warp core. Actually, she has two. Though if you count any auxiliaries, she has six. But wait, there's more. <laughs> yes. Over here we have her auxiliary hatches, so if she needs an air, she needs to replace a warp core, she ejects one, and once it's safe enough to be collected, it's what, collected in one like of the other one. Huh? Does she go through warp cores like Tic Tacs? Why does she need so many of them? Um, because she uses dual interlocked warp core system, so she actually has two in play at all times. As a matter of fact, she doesn't need the two. She can operate off one at a reduced rate. It's just better to have the two. For, mainly for power consumption reasons. So, this is actually the ejection hatch for the warp core itself. Dual line, so it has actually got... The door on the bottom is not just, you know, explosive bolt. It's actually a door. What's the one in the back? Here. Is the that one cool? forward, that's antimatter. Oh, okay, I gotcha. That's the antimatter loading and ejection port. A little bit of uh, randomness. It, the, ha the, the hatch itself was just too large for a single warp core, so I combined the two systems together. Uh, She's got a back sensor all the way back here. This is just, like I say, another sensor. She has hundreds of them. Uh, and let's go up. I'll TP. I'm not gonna find you. 
And this is her umbilical systems. Oh, there you are. Yeah, actually, she has umbilicals. So, it also is the primary deuterium fuel port as well. And I imagine this would be part of the slurry tankage for the deuterium. And all the way back here is just. The refuel port is just a emergency dump port. Yeah, that's what it looks like to me. Yeah, so this is all the umbilicals and refuel ports for the Ava. I don't think we've seen uh, this car, this Shuttle Bay hatch yet. No, uh, we've seen Shuttle Bay 1. Yeah, I don't think we went outside of it though yet. No. Yeah, there's just Shuttle Bay 1, the outside. So this door actually only opens from this point. Oh. Uh, every, every, everything in the green is just fake door. I remember helping you with this door when we were cleaning up the hall. Oh yeah, this door was a pain. That was, it was fun. even worse the pain. Yeah, this uh, this door has been the biggest bane of my existence. It's over fifteen meters long. But no, not the ship. That's not the biggest pain of your existence. Oh no, I've had a phone with this ship. Oh, this must be where it falls into. Yeah, that's what that gap is. Conveniently, it ends just where I needed it to end. <sighs> yeah, it was convenient. And, and of course, the bit above is the control room. Okay. Well, what else do we have? Uh... What about all those um, yacht-looking things? Oh, Somewhere well, there's one actually over here. I copied the one I was working on over here. Because I was doing some other work with it. Trying to measure things up, so... This is one of our yachts. So where does this park? The park in one of the shuttle bays. I've, I've been contemplating shuttle bay 3. <laughs> Hence why the yachts seem always so thin. Like, oh. very, they seem very short. Is because they have to fit in a 15 tall door. Gotcha. Yeah, she has. She. This yacht is probably the most heavily armed of any of her yachts. She does have four torpedo launchers, four uh, cannons, as well as phaser strips. She's also one of the few that has a shuttle bay. A shuttle with a shuttle bay. What goes in here exactly? Oh, that's cool. Shuttle pods. She carries shuttle pods. So, the ether is a nesting doll. <laughs> it's got shuttle bays with shuttles in it with shuttle bays with shells in them. It's a glorified nesting doll. Powered by warp course. Yeah, this is the warp course system. Uh... Yes, someone's gonna complain that this breaks all of the rules, but it's like there is a literal flaw between these two linings, so shut up. It's not like 90, 75% of ships in the Trekverse violate Roddenberry's rules of ships. It's ugly. You got the cargo bay, this is all the lower stuff, so the crew quarters, deflector, RCS, cannons. The Defiant, for example. Yeah, this thing is basically just a Defiant in yacht form. There is supposed to be space between the nacelles, said Mr. Roddenberry. Meanwhile, my ship. Hee <laughs> hee. Space doesn't exist. He needs to create a new rule for s amount of space between a ship between the nacelles. Yeah, if he was alive, that is. He's texting me. No one. But, uh, yeah, that, again, more RCS. A lot of this bottom area is just... It's a lot of the ships, uh... 
I guess you could say low at X. As I'm making that pun. Uh, if go up here. Into the corridor. Sorry, I'm lost. It's good. We'll get there. We'll get there eventually. See? I gotcha. We've got the two other airlocks off this ship, which just so happen to be conveniently behind the bridge. This is way bigger than my Republic class. Way bigger. Bridge? What? That's the bridge window. Um, we've got the office, I think. Conference room. I need to slow my roll. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is the conference room. This is the captain's uh, ready room and bedroom. It does have a bathroom on the other way. Oh yeah. And I have no idea what this space is yet. <laughs> Transporter room systems for that set transporter room. I would say this counts as another project. <laughs> the torpedo launcher. <laughs> oh, I see it. Probably a lounge or something. This is an interesting corridor. Uh, I, I wanted to use these blocks a lot. Why not? Yeah, I did the a quarter concept with those blocks, I think. Yeah, ship, uh, ship's already modded, so I might as well use them. Yeah. She's a weird, she's a quirky one. Uh, there's a load of small rooms, like, this here, I think, is actually for the phaser strip. Uh, that's another dead space room. Yeah, a lot of it does have purpose. As, uh, to get to the other ones, we'll need to go all the way behind the ship, which will take forever. So, I'm just gonna yeet myself there and just make you TP to me. That works for me. I found him anyways. Not that I'll be able to find you again. Oh, I'm right behind you. Oh, okay, that works. People yeah, talking to me? Nope. Okay. Uh, this is the vision. This is the vision without actually out without the torpedo launchers. Are you gonna do anything with this Dauntless? Oh, I brought these over so when people wanted to make uh, yachts, they could use these for kit bashing. Oh, I gotcha. That that's interesting. Yeah, these are that things are kit bash. It is? It doesn't look like yeah. it. You mean the oh, yacht yeah. or the Dauntless? My, my yacht's a kibosh. Of what ships? All of them. I use parts from all of them. I, I spent ages kibboshing her together. Well, it works. You've got the one... I can't remember who made this one now. This looks more like a transport. As a matter of fact, it was... It looks like a droid. Actually... It looks like something a droid would do. I think it was like a HD or someone like that. Uh, the actual shuttle is actually ba basically a retrofitted version of the Polaris, which makes no sense because the Polaris was after the Ava. Polaris is kind of an interesting one. Is that yeah, one is with actually... the... The weird shaped secondary hall with a big dent in it. I feel like it. That may, probably made no sense whatsoever, if I'm being honest. Polaris, if you were to look at the Dynamap and find the Aether, the version 3, it is not the, ne the ship next to her, but the one after.
Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah. This is technically just her yacht, but they wanted to use it, and I'm not against them doing what they want. It works for me. Well. Not for what you need it for, but it works for me. Uh, I like it. Don't get me wrong, there's stuff I would like to improve on, but as time comes, I will. But I do like it. It does the job. Then we've got the, the smaller one that we're working on. What the hell? You have a throne room? Apparently so. Um, I don't know when this originated from. I don't know why it exists. I kind of wish they just... Wait. Wait, 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 okay, um... There. I think it's a good place to end. Really weird. I don't know why this exists. Get down here and we'll do the exit. God, there are so many different rooms back here. I need to have a look what they've been doing down back here. Alright, guys. That has been the ether by this guy right here. Or at least and... some of her. Because there is a lot more to her yet to come. Yeah, I might make another video, update video, but next up should maybe be Droid or Creeper. I'll have to ask him. Droid is doing the, what's he doing? The Shepherd, I think? The Droid's doing the, my, my choice, the Bavelle. Oh my god, this, this name's really hard. The Malachowski. Yeah, that one. Actually, I think Shepherd's being done by Queen. I don't know. Yes, it is. And Creeper is doing the discovery. I might do Creeper because... Creeper's ship, because that came out wrong. Because it's done. No offense, Droid. Alright. Ciao. It's supposed to wave. Come on. Where Wave at this sign. Okay, I'll just wave with the hammer.